Hello, I'm Martin Roberts. Welcome to another DIY project idea here on Martin Roberts Property Tip Bits on YouTube. Make sure that you like this video, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel and tell your friends if you're inspired by what I do. Now, what I'm trying to do in this whole series of DIY projects is use things you might have lying around to create stuff that's really funky and fun, in a nutshell. Yeah, just trying to inspire you to, to get involved in DIY projects. Now, this isn't really about doing things like painting and decorating and repairing a dripping tap. You know, it's just evolved more into projects. It's almost like one up from craft, really but just using skills and techniques that I consider to be DIY techniques. Uh, but let's just, just have some fun with it. Today's project, I think, links even more closely with the whole idea of craft. I hope you enjoy it, because I'm really excited about this one. Because um, one of the things I love are clocks of any sort. I think they're a great thing to make because they're practical, they're fun, they can be very specific to you. So I'm gonna make, or try to make a clock out of bits of stuff that I've got lying around. Um, and I quite like big, sort of wall clock ideas. So as my starting point, I've got this piece of plywood. So as you can see, it's just a bit manky. It's got a cut in it, which is a bit of an annoyance, but it's a reasonable size and it's fairly solid. I then um, have a beach, which I absolutely love, which I collected some stones on. So um, basically, bit of slate and a bit of these all more pebbly type things and I thought maybe I could use those on the clock to create a sort of almost like a seascape and have the stones as the sort of markers as to where 12, 3, 6 and 9 o'clock points are. And then this is the thing that's going to form the back basin of it. This is a really important piece of kit which is a clock motor and some hands but what's special about this one is that it's got a long spindle here and I think when you come to order these on the internet they're not expensive but you need if you're going to do these kind of projects more often than not one which has got a long spindle there so you can put it through stuff because I'm going to try and mount that through the stone. Okay right so what's some process here? I think we need to create probably a round on this so we'll make it a big round circle uh, that we can put our stones onto we'll probably glue uh, the stones in place we'll then probably because i want that to be in the middle have to cut out this bit of plywood so that it's this block sits in there otherwise it's not going to work because i need to be able to access the battery from the back and then we're going to paint it in a kind of seascape so that's that's the general gist so the starting point is really to find out how big a circle i can get on here so if we draw two lines from the corners i'm not saying this is perfect okay so we may well adapt as we normally do as we're going along but let's just see what a circle would look like so let's just put a screw in the middle and then let's try and draw a circle now what i've got here is a piece of string so let's cut that piece of string to the bottom length like that and then let's tie one end of it to that and the other end to a pencil i'm just going to use this as a guide and we're going to go around so Right, so what's that shown me, marvellously, is that distance there is about that distance there. So if I shift everything over that way by that distance, I got a feeling we're going to be all right for this circle. Now we could create all sorts of interesting designs on this, couldn't we? We could create it in the shape of an amoeba, or wobbly wobbly, or we could make it in the shape of a shell. But I quite like round, so we're going to sit with round, especially as it just looks like that might work perfectly. So I'm just going to draw a line along there and I'm going to measure what distance that is, which is 35 millimetres and that is 35 millimetres, so that's good. So if we move this along by 35 millimetres, <coughs> let's try that again with a pencil. Well, between the mixture of those, that's all going to be good. So now I've got so many lines on here, I don't even know which one's going to be around. So I'm going to just reinforce the one that I want to cut to because I don't want to cut it wrong. Because it's the only piece of wood like this that I have. You know what? I've got an idea. What I hope I, you like about these videos is that I struggle like, like you might, but I'm, I fix it. 
Oh, for God's sake. It's ever decreasing circles. Look, that'll do. Right, excellent. So, it's not going to be a perfect circle. <laughs> if you're shouting at the computer screen right now, write it to me on a postcard, see what I should have done. So now what I've got to do is I've got to cut out, which one do we prefer? This side or that side? They're both rubbish. Oh, God. I'm going to go with my original. I like that better. Right, we're going to use a jigsaw. But as ever, when we're using power tools, we are super careful, making sure we are wearing our glasses and possibly gloves. Sometimes the easiest jobs. Honestly. Whatever. It doesn't have to be perfect, because nature's not perfect, is it? In case I haven't explained why I'm using a jigsaw, a jigsaw has a very small, thin blade. So when you're cutting round things, they are the thing to use. If you're cutting in straight lines, you can use a circular saw, but you could not do this with a circular saw. There you go. Roman Gladiator on his chariot. I'd be happy with that. Now I just need to... So, on with our face mask. Now, you want to stop most dusts, but some dusts are really worse than others. Normal wood dust from this kind of stuff. It's not ideal, but it's not going to be poisonous. It's just not good to breathe it in. But there are certain woods, uh, I think the Roco is one of them, which really are nasty. So in general, you want to make sure that you are wearing a face mask when you're all dust sanding. I always find they work better when you put the sanding pad on. I actually did quite a good job considering. A bit of rubber. Yeah, schoolboy error. Right, we now have a nice smooth surface, which I'm now going to create a seascape on. So, the plan is, why don't we paint this look a bit like a seascape? Uh, so I have some, yeah, but painting's not my strong point really. This means, this again, could go horribly wrong. So what I've got is some acrylic paint. And I'm no Rembrandt, all right? So this is pushing the boundaries of my abilities a bit. But let me see if I can create something which looks vaguely seascapey. So there's some little touches I could do. Unfortunately, the beach is the only bit that sort of lets it down, but I don't think that matters. It's cool, it's great, it's fantastic, I love it. Do anything in the sky? No. So, that's gonna go on there. Now luckily, this paint is super quick drying, so that's really good news. Sort of done this in the wrong order, because just remember I need to cut a hole out of it, old oh, fiddlesticks. Because I've realized the design flaw. Although this is one of those extra long whatnot thing majubris, it's still not gonna go through my rock, and the piece of wood here. So, I need to drill out the hole in the middle, because I need somewhere to start my thing anyway, but I need just to make it so that it's the same size as that, so that I can position this correctly. I luckily know that that is the middle, because that is where I drilled. So, okay. Drill a hole for the... So, I've got to draw around this. So, I'm now going to cut out this so this can sit in there with my jigsaw. So that now fits in there. So that's going to go like that. My rock is going to sit on the top of it. And the problem that that's upside down, we are rocking and rolling. And you remember why I had to do that, because that isn't long enough to go through the rock and the piece of wood. So next we have to do is drill a hole in this rock. Now I like quite like the fact, not the fact it's got blue paint on it, this rock's got a sort of flat surface on one side and it sticks out a bit on the other. We'll probably have 
the flat surface uh, on the back. Now, I've never drilled through slate before. Now, you can get a specific drill which is for cutting through ceramics and it's got a big point on it. And my guess is that would be the ideal thing for me to have right now because I bet it'd be ideal for chopping through this piece of slate. Unfortunately, I don't have one. What's the worst that can happen? Well, the worst that can happen is the slate splits, but hey -ho. Oh, look at that. Ho, 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 ho! Ah, ha, ha! Joy! That fits there, through there like that. Almost like it was made for it. Who'd have thought? So, we now have the constituent parts. We now have the fun bit of trying to put it together. Now, uh, here's my uh, thing. Stone in the middle needs to be attached. Come sa. And then the idea is we put stones, which I gather from the beach, uh, around the edges. We'll probably at there. And then little stones. So I'm going to now just level it up so it looks right. I could use my handy protractor to work out the exact angles, but I can't be bothered. It looks all right to me. So if I'm happy with those. So what I'm going to do now is attach that. But I'm going to use this, which I can now attach in place. And I believe it has a little doofer, which will enable me to attach the back. So probably, I remember I said one of these before again. I'm going to attach. I did it once right, I can do it twice. I want to make sure the battery compartment is at the bottom. I don't know why, I don't suppose it really matters, because at the end of the day you adjust it to the right time anyway, so I don't think it really, really matters, but that seems to me to be about right. I can't quite remember how this works. I think that goes on like that. God, I'm making something go wrong. That goes on like that. I'm going to make nothing like that. Right, so that holds that now in the correct position. This is not going to be a clock that they time athletics championships with, so it's a sort of one-ish, two-ish, three-ish clock. But I still want to be, it to be roughly right. So now, in order to attach this in place, we're going to use a glue. Now there are lots and lots of different types of glues out there these days and they all look the same as in they come in a tube but they're all vastly different and the technology on them has really improved uh, over the last few years so it's worth looking to make sure you get the right kind of glue. So uh, this one here is it says extreme power bonds and, and seals virtually anything and it's crystal clear so the fact it's clear is good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to now glue everything in place. And again, they're having to hold quite a lot of weight. So I'm going to put a fairly large, big dollop on these stones. So slight adjustments there, but we're now happy with the positioning of the rocks. They are now pretty much fastened in position. I could have marked that probably scientifically using my protractor and all those things I had, but I didn't. And I paid the price a little, I feel. So that is that. Um, we now have to wait for that to dry, but let's just try and see what it looks like with the clock face on. And one of the reasons I wanted to put the rock on there is that it had to be higher so that it would clear the stones. Well, I think that is pretty good. And I'm really proud of that. It wasn't hard though, was it? And that's the point. A few bits of wood, a few stones, one clock mechanism which costs £2.50 on eBay and you've created something which is really rather special. So that's what this is all about, right? DIY project ideas. I hope you enjoyed that. That's going to go up on my wall and um, yeah, I just, I just encourage you to give it a go. You know, you saw how I messed that up, saw how I didn't get it right first time. I'm not perfect at this, but the thing is adapting and then you've got something which is, at the end of the day, something that you've made that you can be proud of. Hope you like this. Make sure you like this video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you tell your mates and set the little alarm bell to let you know when I've done other projects like this. But for now, thank you very much and see you next time.